going to the top on Chad Austin, who is not moving. Flying headbutt. Chris Benoit's name hasn't been mentioned on WWE television in 15 years, and it probably never will be again. His crimes will likely never be fully understood, but people continue to try. Late at night on June 22, 2007, Chris Benoit killed his wife Nancy in an upstairs bedroom in their house in Fayetteville, Georgia. Nancy's limbs were bound, and her injuries showed that Benoit had pressed his knee into her back while strangling her to death with the cord. The next morning, Benoit drugged his seven-year-old son Daniel with Xanax, leaving him unconscious and then suffocated him. Benoit left a copy of the Bible by each body. Nancy's sister Sandra Tofaloni said on the Talk is Jericho podcast that she found that strange because they weren't very religious. Benoit talked on the phone to his friend Chavo Guerrero Jr. and told him that Nancy and Daniel were suffering from food poisoning. On Talk is Jericho, Chavo said something sounded off. Benoit ended the phone call by saying, Chavo, I love you. On June 24th, Benoit killed himself, creating a noose from the end of a weight machine cord to hang himself. Police found him hanging from the pulley cable. On Talk is Jericho, Sandra Tofaloni said that Benoit's online search history showed he researched the quickest and easiest way to break a neck. Benoit also reportedly searched for a Bible story about the prophet Elijah and the resurrection of a dead boy. Benoit missed his scheduled appearance at the WWE pay-per-view that night, Vengeance Night of Champions. When no one heard from him in 24 hours, Chavo Guerrero showed his messages from Benoit to WWE management. WWE officials then called the police. Michael Benoit, Chris's father, told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution that his son left a handwritten suicide note that said, I'm preparing to leave this earth. On Talk is Jericho, Chris Jericho told a bizarre story about working with Chris Benoit in New Japan Pro Wrestling. During a tag match, Jericho slightly botched a spin kick, so Benoit sold a move that had barely touched him. This imperceptible mistake weighed heavily on Benoit. Jericho said he found Benoit in a boiler room area doing 500 squats as self-punishment. But that one moment he couldn't let go of, and then he said, you know, I have to do squats. Like he had to purge himself. Benoit, feeling like he would have to put himself through physical pain because of a botched spot nobody even noticed, shows what kind of mindset he had even in his younger days. In 1994, Benoit started wrestling in ECW, and it was here he would get his most famous nickname, The Crippler. This moniker was cemented when Benoit wrestled Sabu at November to Remember 1994. The match ended after just two minutes when Benoit threw Sabu into a face-first bump. Sabu miscalculated and tried to change direction mid-air, causing him to land directly on his neck. Sabu's neck was broken, causing damage to his spinal cord and nervous system. According to the book Ring of Hell, promoter Paul Heyman found Benoit hiding in a closet, rocking and weeping uncontrollably because of what happened. He was terrified that he had crippled Sabu in the ring. Heyman had to physically pick Benoit up and send him to the hospital with Sabu. Heyman took advantage of the accident and used the footage, which would become infamous and one of the most replayed spots in ECW history, to push Benoit even further. He used it to emphasize the Crippler nickname. In 1997, Chris Benoit started dating Nancy Tofaloni, who was best known in WCW as Woman. Tofaloni was married to Kevin Sullivan, who was in charge of WCW Creative at the time. Sullivan booked the storyline of his own wife starting an on-screen relationship with Benoit. Much to his surprise, this storyline became a reality and Tofaloni started dating Benoit in real life. It became wrestling legend that Sullivan booked his own divorce. Benoit and Tofaloni eventually married. Just months before Benoit and Nancy's deaths, documents obtained by the Fayetteville Daily News showed that Nancy suspected Benoit of having a relationship with one of the WWE divas. A popular fan theory at the time was that this WWE diva was Victoria. However, Victoria categorically denied these rumors at the time on her MySpace page, writing, A MySpace friend emailed me yesterday to let me know that a wrestling gossip website is claiming that they have an anonymous source or sources that say I was Chris Benoit's secret mistress at the time of his murder-suicide. First, let me say, this is absolutely false. I invite the reporter from that website to come to my home city, and I will submit myself to a polygraph. William Regal spoke on his podcast, Gentleman Villain, of a terrible car accident he had with both Chris Benoit and Nancy Tofaloni. Regal referred to it as a near-death experience for all three of them. Regal, Benoit, and Tofaloni were returning to a hotel from the gym in preparation for the WCW Spring Stampede 1997 pay-per-view. Regal said he was stopped at a stop sign when he noticed a car coming towards them at speed in the rearview mirror. Unable to move, Regal could do nothing as the car slammed into them. He said, this car hit me. 
I have no idea what speed. It flipped onto the grass verge. It flipped my car three times. He considers himself lucky that he survived and took note of his surroundings. I look across and Chris is hanging with his tongue out and I look across at Nancy and she's, her eyes are closed. I think they're both dead. Regal somehow managed to kick his way out of the car and pulled both Chris and Nancy out through the window. Amazingly, both Benoit and Regal wrestled on the pay-per-view that night. Chris Benoit had a 22-year career in wrestling. In that time, Benoit was accused of several counts of severe bullying. Current AEW ring announcer Justin Roberts went into detail of these in his autobiography, Best Seat in the House. Roberts wrote that Benoit, along with Jamie Noble, tackled him to the ground in an airport. Both men put him in a double cross face and refused to let go even after he tapped. The incident left Roberts unable to walk for days afterwards. Roberts notes that Benoit would also sometimes treat him with kindness and often called Roberts' father to check up on him as he was going through cancer treatment. In another example, The Miz said in his WWE 24 documentary that in 2006, he was eating chicken in the locker room and accidentally got crumbs on a WWE veteran's bag. Benoit confronted him and said, You are not allowed to dress in our locker room. I think you should just stay out of the locker room. Miz was then forced to change and shower elsewhere for seven months, all because Benoit wouldn't let him back into the locker room. In the months leading up to Chris Benoit's death, many of his friends said he was acting like a completely different person. On Dark Side of the Ring, friends said that Benoit was exhibiting extreme paranoia, obsessing over child kidnappings and violent fans. They said this was very out of character for him. Benoit began to take different routes to the gym every day, as well as different routes home from the airport, fearing he was being followed. Benoit even took different cars to evade whoever he thought was following him. On Talk is Jericho, Sandra Tofaloni went into detail about Benoit's paranoia, saying Benoit would ask to drive different cars or obsess over alarms. When it did start happening, it was something I noticed immediately. Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero considered each other to be brothers. I know that I love you. I miss you. Chris Jericho, a friend of both Benoit and Guerrero, said on Talk is Jericho that Eddie's death broke Benoit. Jericho remembers comforting Benoit with a hug at Guerrero's funeral. He said, It was one of the most desperate, saddest, I'm hanging on for dear life hugs that you could ever get. Benoit's grief was plain to see on the Monday Night Raw episode that memorialized Guerrero. Benoit was visibly crushed, openly weeping on camera. Benoit decided to stay out of the public eye after Eddie's death and even started shutting himself off from his own friends and family. Sandra Tofaloni revealed on Dark Side of the Ring that Benoit would go months without talking to family members. He had started a journal to work through his depression over losing Eddie, but it was all too late. After the death of Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit considered quitting WWE altogether. Sandra Tofaloni said on Talk is Jericho that Benoit was scared of leaving WWE because wrestling was all he had ever known. Sandra said that Nancy was ready to move on, but Benoit was hesitant, explaining, she was ready for the next move, and I don't think that he was. In his mind, physically or emotionally, he was just really scared. So a lot of that boiled over into their personal life. With Nancy's support, Benoit began to consider alternate career options and settled on the idea of starting a wrestling school in Atlanta, Benoit Academy. Chris and Nancy had begun developing business ideas for the school and even had merchandise made, but Benoit was still heavily involved in WWE he never took time off and he was still booked in big storylines. He was booked for an ECW World Championship match on the day that he died. Any potential retirement seemed like a long way off. At the time of his death, Chris Benoit's body contained 10 times the normal levels of testosterone, a huge indication that Benoit was abusing steroids at the end of his life. Many wrestlers of Benoit's era have spoken about using steroids and Brian Alvarez of the Wrestling Observer speculated Benoit had abused the drugs for 20 years. Nancy Benoit had a low opinion of the WWE wellness program. In texts found on Chris Benoit's phone, Nancy said, I will not accept this steroid-induced roller coaster ride of emotional abuse. Get off the stuff. I'm probably not the only one who could see, and we both know the wellness program is a joke. In a criminal case against Dr. Phil Aston, Benoit's personal physician, it was revealed that Aston's prescription to Benoit far exceeded the normal amount for a testosterone disorder. The discovery of Benoit's steroid abuse led many to believe that roid rage was the reason Benoit snapped and killed his family. However, Benoit's father thinks there was a different cause. 
On the top of a 16-foot line. Chris Benoit suffered numerous concussions during his long in-ring career. ABC News reports that Benoit himself had told friends that he had suffered more concussions than he could count. When he was performing, concussion protocols were far more lax than today, and it wasn't uncommon for wrestlers to take unprotected chair shots to the head. Benoit's family believes head injuries are what led him to snap. Chris Benoit's father, Michael Benoit, turned his son's brain over to Julian Bales of the Sports Legacy Institute. Bales, the head of neurosurgery at West Virginia University, studied Chris's brain and found that at the time of his death, he had the brain of an 80-year-old suffering from severe Alzheimer's disease. Damage was found in all four lobes of the brain and deep into the brain stem. Bales told ABC News, It was uh, uh, extensive throughout Chris's brain. It was striking and maybe shocking. Bale said that while he can't know for sure that this brain damage is the reason Benoit did what he did, it's likely it had a behavioral expression.